Gentlemen, we've got a fine show for you tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, that was the top of the order queue there. You aren't going to believe. The following program is brought to you in living color. Yes, it's Friday. Yes, it's Good Friday. And yes, it is Friday Night Live. And you are here with me, the Grom, to celebrate another little amazing week on planet Earth. And uh, the fact that we all made it to the weekend. And hopefully, depending on where you are in the world, whether or not you got a freebie, a little bank holiday Friday, a day where you didn't have to turn into work and you could already start the weekend and get fired up. I know some unfortunate souls in other continents may not have had that grace, but yes, if you were here with me in the UK, you have officially started the weekend. It was a doozy. I don't know what you did, but I know I made the most of it. But all in all, it's lovely to have you here. It's Friday night and I have a show for you. That's the main thing. First off, I hope you've got a beverage, whether it's hot, whether it's cold, maybe it's somewhere in between. I don't know what that leaves you with, but brew, coffee, can we pour it without spilling it? Oh yeah, and I don't even know if you can see the steam off that, but she's a freshie. So, guys and girls, we're here. You usual suspects are in the live chat. And it's awesome to see that people are in there already. I can imagine there's going to be a few people that are absent. I know that Mr. Dan Cov, the legendary Dan Cov, is already trailing or blazing a trail across to Philadelphia, I believe, to catch a gig or a live event. So cheers to you, Dan. I hope you have an awesome evening, dude. And uh, I hope you catch this on the, on the replay. Dude, that is hot. And as I say... At every start of every show, I will do my very best to catch all of the comments. And uh, if you haven't already noticed, there is a poll going. Check me out. Like, talk about 21st century Grom. I've figured out how to run polls in the live chat. And uh, I've even figured out how I can close it down during the show and give you a conclusion by the end of it. Yes, I know. It's quite amazing. As I say, I will do my very best to keep an eye on the live chats. And if there are things that pop up, I will try to give you answers. If not, as I always say, I do sit after the show and go through all of the live chat. Because I must admit, there are some there are some comedy geniuses. There are some utter piss takers. But most of all, the atmosphere in there is fantastic. And I've said it before and I will say it again. One of these days, I'm going to fire up a live show and I'm just going to get in the live chat. I'm not even going to do a show. I'm going to uh, just, I don't know. I might even take on a little bit of like vertical live style and just play like, I don't know, birds eating off of a bird feeder or something while uh, I just get in the live chat and have a conversation with you guys and girls. So who knows? Who knows what the future will bring? Talking about comments though, I did have, and let's see if I can get this right without making a complete pig's ear of it. So I want to say last week, or maybe even the week before, I did get some comments uh, in the live chat that I missed. 
it happens. I'm not very good at doing two things at once. However, there was one from the legendary Paul C. Hello, Hassa, who uh, after seeing the J and J Zero Iron Maiden board asked me, what other brand decks you got? I also collect decks. So uh, off the top of my head in reply to that, I have an almost skateboard. I have, uh, it's the the brain, the brain, ladies and gentlemen, Rodney Mullen Muttley board. Uh, I also have a tri-state or the basically the elephant tri-state board from the one and only Mr. Mike Valley, legend. Uh, then I have, I want to say it's Pocket Rockets is the company, possibly. I don't know who the manufacturer of the board exactly is, but it was a special edition limited run to commemorate the passing of DMX, epic board. There is a few others. I have a Alien Workshop board, which is not really going to go into the collection. I'm probably end up breaking it out of its packet and uh, using it at some point because I did buy it to add to the collection. However, the cellophane was ever so slightly damaged and where it's been kept for however many years, the cellophane's kind of rubbed the print ever so slightly. So uh, it's not a crisp one. It's not a freshie. So it definitely not going to be mounted on the wall, but I kind of, I, I'm struggling. I am struggling to bring myself to break it out of the cellophane, throw some trucks and uh, grip tape on it and get it out and use it. But who knows? Uh, and apart from that, I can't quite remember. I know I've got a lot of blank decks that I've kind of messed around with and put like 30 year old Grom branding on and stuff like that. Uh, but yeah, I wouldn't say that I collect boards as such. I just buy ones that I either couldn't get when I was a teenager and uh, some of the awesome ones that have come out in the last couple of years, I've tried my very best. Obviously that Iron Maiden one being just too awesome to pass up. Uh, second to that, there was a comment from the already named Dan Cov, who is obviously just gallivanting across the states to go and do something more awesome than tuning into a Friday Night Live. How is there something more awesome than a Friday Night Live? It is possible, ladies and gentlemen, and I won't hold it against him. However, he said uh, he wants an interview with somebody that got off their path and then basically got back on it and how they got back on it. And uh, that's an interesting one. I uh, obviously mentioned last week how a lot of the people that I tend to interview, I interview them purposely because one, I've got a, some form of sort of rapport or history with these people um, throughout the many lives or past lives of the Grom. And basically, they're all people that went out there, they pursued their love, their passion to the very end regardless of what it done for them financially or what it done for them in the, the general mass public, they've got after it. And some of them have absolutely done a fantastic job at it. And uh, I just like to kind of shine a little bit of light on people like that because it is possible. I'm trying my darndest. I'm reading every tactical book going, every managerial kind of book, self-help book, and anything, anything I can read or listen to, to try to make that little thing in my head snap to the point where I have a eureka moment, realize that I am capable, realize that there is something that I can make a niche for in my own little world, and uh, hopefully, fingers crossed, go that extra step and make it financially uh, feasible to actually do and live on, um, ideally, whatever it is, to be able to work remotely. And uh, if we're going really far, get to a position where I can actually just uh, be free, be free to do what I want, something like that, as well as work. But um, it would just nice, it would be nice not to be tied down at a desk. It would be nice to be fully creative and uh, in charge of my own life. I know that's a heavy claim on a Friday night, but why can't I? And why can't you? That's the really big question. So uh, it's possible. I know that we can do it. I believe in you. I've just got to start believing in myself. Get out there. And in the words of Jocko Willink, get after it. So uh, yeah, guys and girls, see, just to prove the point that yes, I do actually read through the comments. And uh, if I do miss anything, 
I'll fire it up on a screen. It might be a week later, it might be two weeks later. Who knows, but I do and uh, I, I do enjoy you guys and girls firing questions off in the live. Obviously, if you're not watching this when it went live, please feel free to leave comments under the video. I will always reply. You never know, you might even get a comment or a, a question be pulled up in a Friday Night Live. That's pretty awesome, right? Check me out, cutting edge. So, as always, there are the usual suspects. There is the legendary Tom in the chat, the legendary Chris Avery, the man that they call the Mr. Rick of the Corn Life Network is here, and Oi Oi himself, the Mr. Cockney Buddha. I love saying Buddha like that. Blame a skinny man and Mr. 45 and Rugby P for that one, Mr. Cockney Buddha. Uh, if you want to trace back where that came from, it's a track called Worldwide. And he opens with saying, you on the track with Joe Buddha, because it was a Joe Buddha production. There's a little bit of uh, information that I digress. Anyway, guys and girls, can we do it? Can we hit the hour mark? Can we get the glasses on? Can we break out the wig? Will we break out the wig? Who knows? You'll just have to stay tuned and see what madness is in this week's Friday Night Live news. Something like that, right? <laughs> Got my notes, got my glasses, left the wig on the side. But we done well. So, yes, it's Friday Night Live, and uh, it wouldn't be right without me with these stupid little glasses on. Little probably not being a very appropriate term for them. And uh, yeah, some news. Some news that takes you away from the madness of the mainstream and brings you slightly closer into the spurious and randomness that is the Friday Night Live show. So, this week, I'm not failing you, but we're keeping it anim animal themed, shall we say. So, there is no other coming a bear than the legendary Yogi Bear. However, Friday Night Live News might just have tracked down a few bears that might give this one a run for his money. So, it's a story quite close to home actually, in Bedfordshire in the UK, uh, literally just up the road from me. Uh, three, well, four I believe, but Black bears at Woburn Safari Park ride on a swan pedalo. This is an epic story. Uh, go further out there, dig into it. It's, it's, it's just fun. It put a smile on my face. Four young bears, Harvard, Maple, Colorado and Aspen, enjoyed riding on the pedalos at Woburn Safari Park in Bedfordshire, England. A lucky group of black bears were treated to a pedalo ride after a lake formed in their enclosure. After heavy rain created a mini lake in their 13 acre reserve, keepers at Woburn Safari Park decided to float a little swan pedalo. I'll go back, messed up a little bit there. Um, a, a, a swan pedalo on the water that had collected in their, their paddock, basically. According to Tom Babington, deputy head of the carnival sector at the park in Bedfordshire, the bears were immediately intrigued by their new neighbour and wasted no time in investigating it. Uh, I thought I had a couple more pictures of this actually, uh, as you would have seen by that little mishap there. But basically, this pedalo weren't in there for long. The, uh, the pedalo itself was out of service because I think it was waiting for new pedals to be fitted. So the keepers decided to throw it on this sort of makeshift lake that it collected after the amount of rainfall we'd had. And uh, just, they uh, run a scheme to try to get bears intrigued and fire up their like neurons and get them all excited and fired up. And uh, let's just say, if you go and check out this first story further, the bears got fired up, man. They were floating around the lake on it and I just thought it was kind of, uh, kind of hysterical. Good vibe anyway. So moving on to the next story, as you've already seen the clip, Jungle Book, Fabulous movie, and uh, if you've never trusted a snake, you'd never trust this snake. Uh, but it's more so to the point of when he done his little hypnotization thing, he looks smashed off his face. And somebody, I think, has taken that a little bit further. So let me see if I can get this right. Elvish Yadav, I believe, who has millions of followers online and also is a TV reality star, is detained for allegedly allegedly supplying snake venom to be used as a drug at raves. Yeah, this is pretty gnarly, but 
hey man, it's on the news, don't trust me, go and uh, dig the rabbit hole, or in this case, the snake hole yourself. Indian YouTuber Elvish Yadav has been arrested for allegedly supplying snake venom to be used as a recreational drug at raves. The influencer, who has 15 million YouTube subscribers, was detained under the Wildlife Act, according to an Indian broadcasting NDTV. Uh, a party he was at in November was raided on suspicion that snake venom was being used as a drug by party goers. Police launched an investigation and questioned five people on suspicion of snake smuggling, who named Yadav as alleged organiser of these parties and the snake venom supplier. Yadav, who won the uh, who won the Indian version of Big Brother, Big Boss OTT, denied all charges and NDTV reported he said he would fully cooperate with the police. Nine snakes, including cobras, were recovered from the party along with 200 millilitres of snake venom. That is pretty gnarly. Like, I'm all up for having a laugh and a giggle and uh, doing whatever I can to kind of, you know, get the ultimate high, but snake venom? Yeah, it's a little bit gnarly, dude. So, staying with animals, and this one kind of made me chuckle. Um, let's just hope that nobody falls foul to this. Uh, so, a woman rushed a pom-pom to a wildlife hospital thinking it was an injured baby hedgehog. Yes, it is true. Oh no, can it be saved? That's what the kindly animal lover who found it lying on the pavement in, a, in the cold wondered. She scooped it up, took it home and put it in a cardboard box with a hot water bottle and a small dish of food. Nursing it back to health, sadly, it didn't seem to have any appetite. When it was still hadn't moved the next morning, she rushed it to Lower Moss Wood Wildlife Hospital in Nutford, Cheshire, uh, there was nothing they could do. It was a pom-pom. Apparently, she was very embarrassed. This happens more than often, uh, more than more often than you may think. Uh, it's not just hedgehogs. The RSPCA regularly investigate snake sightings, which turn out to be toys or even bits of old strap. Uh, they've also been called out to rescue stuffed animals, decoy ducks, and a white plastic chair that was mistaken for a swan. So, be careful guys and girls, when you're out there and you think you're doing some awesomeness, just double check it. It could possibly happen. Maybe if I ducked my head down, my head could even look like that pom-pom, so uh, don't scoop me up and take me to Tiggy Winkles, please. Nevertheless, that was Friday night. It's Good Friday, and uh, that was a Friday night news. Back to the main show. <laughs> Well, guys and girls, be careful. Be careful of people trying to sell you snake venom to get high on and um, pom-poms. How gnarly is that? Let me just say, like uh, today, and you will see it in tomorrow's blog, my lowest part of today was um, I had to go to the summer house. And while inserting the key or attempting to insert the key into the keyhole, I felt slight resistance and heard a very small kind of crunch. Now, not a fatal crunch, but nevertheless, it wasn't good sounding. And uh, to my astonishment, I had a little looky in the hole and there was a bee staring at me. And uh, let's just say, it wasn't a small bee and it wasn't a massive bee. Nevertheless, it was a bee, a bee in the goddamn keyhole. And uh, let's just say it super bummed me out because I was like, for the next 10 or 15 minutes talking to this bee, apologizing profusely and trying to coax him out because I was just like, no man, I'm super bummed out. I, I've got mad love for the bees, especially on my latest uh, honey endeavors with my coffee. And it's just like, no, I don't want to be the uh, the end of this glorious little, uh, little thing, you know? So uh, I coaxed him out with a dandelion and managed to get him onto a, uh, 
like a, a lilac looking flower that we've got in the, the garden. And he looks super happy or it looked super happy. Um, he carried on collecting pollen. I'm not too sure. It almost looked like he'd been attacked by a bird because his wings were a little bit mangled and he didn't look exactly too sprightly. But I can't imagine I helped stuff in a key in his face either. But he did move. He wasn't injured. He wasn't crippled. And maybe I'm just hoping, fingers crossed, that that story pans out to uh, be okay for him, bless him. So uh, I should have had him on as a guest, really, this evening, and just asked him, and we could have done a reconstruction. <laughs> but uh, yeah, all jokes aside, it super bummed me out. Um, but nevertheless, going through some of those news articles this evening, the Bears at Woburn is absolutely awesome, and they seem to have a whale of a time. As I say, I'm not too sure about the Snake Venom one. That just seems a little bit far-fetched. Hey, whatever floats your boat. You see how I've done the bear boat link? Yeah, savage. And uh, the lady that basically mistook a pom-pom for a hedgehog. Maybe she was on that snake venom. Who blooming well knows these days? Anyway, today, this morning, it was Good Friday and the Grump didn't have to go to work, which is a winner. Andrea had the bright idea that we should get up and go swimming. Yes. So we travelled off to our local pool and uh, by eight o'clock this morning, the Grom was in a swimming pool. Now, I learned some value, well, I learned one particularly valuable lesson that is going to take me a while to unpack and figure out that I need to going forward. And you are probably going to find this highly amusing. However, I found out today that I struggle and almost near on impossible cannot breathe out underwater. A slight bit of issue when uh, obviously I'm thinking over the next couple of years I want to progress in my uh, life of surfing and uh, being asked to be a strong swimmer kind of a bit crucial to that and I can front crawl like a demon however as the Cockney Buddha will probably rightly uh, chime in here trying to do uh, a front crawl while box breathing and suspending your breath for maybe four strokes, breathing in while your head's out, taking another four strokes, breathing out, <laughs> suspending for another four strokes, and then repeat is uh, not exactly good uh, economy of motion, to say the least. So uh, yeah, Basically, I can do a full length of a swimming pool on about three breaths. However, by the time that I get to the end of it, I'm near on like depleted of all oxygen in my body and uh, a little bit high, to say the least, apart from the fact that my body is absolutely dying from uh, exhaustion because it's got no oxygen going around its body, brain or muscles. Eh. But never mind, we didn't drown. So uh, apart from that, I uh, spent a lot of time in the pool today while let's just say everybody and their aunt continued swimming while I persisted to sit in the corner like a naughty schoolboy and try to figure out how to breathe or just get my head around the fact of breathing out while my head is underwater. So I seemed to struggle with uh, exhaling through my nose and I, I was playing with the thought of just trying to breathe out through your mouth because that does the same thing. But I tell you one thing, yeah, so uh, who knows, the Grum might even go into some swimming lessons. But while talking about the water and swimming, this leads to uh, the awesomeness that I'm going to tell you as an exclusive. And uh, it's kind of partly why the pole is running. And we're going to see the pole this second. Let's see if we can pull it up on the screen because I'm, I'm pretty good like that. Well, you know, I say that. Let's pull up the live chat and let's see if we click on there. Boom. I don't know if you can see that. No, it's not open the poll in the live chat on the video. That sucks. Actually, the live chat's not even fired up, is it, in the video? So anyway, in the live chat, it says, should I do a vertical live tomorrow? I'm quite interested that 17% that answered on this uh, said, what's a vertical live? So first I will explain, what is a vertical live? Let me uh, close down this chat because that's not working on the side of the screen, which sucks. So a vertical live is pretty much what it says on the tin. However, in the wonderful world of the YouTube algorithm, 
if you open up a live and you start with it vertical, it continues vertical. The, uh, the highlight of that is that it also gets shown in the live reels section. Now, if you're not familiar with uh, the live reels or shorts, shall we say, um, in your YouTube channel, you can go and watch these amazing shorts that are so highly creative and awesome. If you pause that video, it brings you up a little tab at the top that says subscription and live or subscribed and live. I can't quite remember. However, if you click on the subscribe, it shows you all of the channels that you are subscribed to and it just gives you a clean feed of all of those channels shorts. Now, if you click on the live, it would take you off into another little world, which is basically shorts or vertical lives that are currently happening at that time that you touch on the tab. So you could see people all over the world, regardless of where they are and what they're doing, because literally when I say regardless of what they're doing, yes, I will let you investigate into that and see what you think. So, yes, there's the madness. However, as of tomorrow morning, the Grom's up early again. The Grom has all of his kit ready. He has his surfboard ready. He has his wax, his leash, his wetsuit, and everything else that he needs to fire up the car, fire off down to the coast of the UK again. Now, I don't want to get too excited. I don't want to give too much away. But let's just say I've been eagerly watching the surf report for a certain spot all week and uh, by the time it got to uh, pulling the trigger on it and knowing that this was going to happen the surf report in the time that I'm going to be there has gone from being poor to good to fair which I am super buzzing off of at the minute currently it is claiming three to four foot at 10 seconds now for some experienced awesome gnarly surfers out there they're going to be like eh It'll be fun, but I wouldn't get up at stupid o'clock in the morning to go for that. However, for the Grom, three to four foot at 10 seconds is absolutely on the button. If it pulls off, if the conditions come together, if the gods and the surf gods and the gods of the sea all shine on the little Grom, he might be having quite a fun morning tomorrow. So this leads me to what the poll is. And I'm going to close it now because you're all claiming 83% guys and girls. So thank you to everybody that's voted in that. I'm closing the poll now. I'm hoping the 17% now know what I'm kind of going on about. And uh, I'm hoping that you're seeing that conclusion in the live chats. So tomorrow we will be at the coast. The big question is, do we do a vertical live from the spot? I've been saying it for maybe the past few months that uh, every time a Friday Night Live's happened before I've gone away, I was like, I'm going to do a live. Keep your eyes peeled. And then I get too excited, too carried away, too uh, into what I'm doing and completely forget. So tomorrow, I'm going to do my very best. And this goes out to all of the lovely people that I know on a personal level that have my contact details. If you're awake, scream at me. Scream at the grump. Say, hey, grump. Where's that vertical live? Where is that live? So I'll tell you now, guys and girls, I will not be scheduling it. It will just be something that happens. And uh, I'm sorry to say that I reckon a majority of you lovely people would be fast asleep, um, especially if you're on the other side of the world. And that also leads me to the fact of, thank God the clocks change on a Sunday. So we will be back in the normal kind of time zones for other people in, uh, in the States. But... Yes, tomorrow. I imagine a lot of you guys stateside will be fast asleep. I'm hoping that it will be somewhere around 12 o'clock to 1 o'clock GMT tomorrow. So if you're in the UK, it will be a reasonable time. Obviously, if you are in the States, as we're still only, I think, four hours behind, not five as normal. I can't remember. Um, that'll be like, what, what, eight o'clock? So maybe, who knows? But I would just say it now that it would be really awesome if you were there. And I did just see the everyday servers popped in as well. So, Adam, good evening, sir. And, uh, dude, I'm going surfing tomorrow. So, 
What do you reckon? Do you reckon I should throw out a vertical live? Do you want to see the British coastline that I will be visiting at three to four foot at 10 seconds? I know it's not exactly California, baby, but uh, yeah, in my head, that's firing, dude. Eight hours for you. And is that correct, Adam, in thinking that? Because obviously we haven't put our clocks forward yet. So it might be seven if I'm thinking about it. Don't know. But I will leave that up to you lovely guys and girls. I've seen the comments firing up. And as I say, I will get to them after the show. And give them a thorough read through. So um, yeah, man, do it. Flat here. Dude. So I also know somebody else that currently lives out that side of the world. And uh, they're saying the same thing. From what I've been told, you've been having really, really awful weather and it's just insanely flat. So I hope that changes up for all of you because uh, I sure as hell know how I feel if I haven't got any water time in. And uh, I know for experienced surfers, that's got to be even twice, maybe 10 times as hard as how I suffer with it. So I do hope to see someone there, a familiar face um, on a live Talking of familiar faces, there will be a familiar face there tomorrow, but it won't be my normal surfing buddy. So uh, I just want to say to my normal surfing buddy, if you see this, please, I hope you get well soon, dude. And uh, just get hold of me and we'll go and catch some waves. But I will be uh, most definitely trying to catch a wave for you tomorrow. And while talking about people that need to get better soon, I know the legendary uh, legendary Rick from the Corn Life Network put out a live today, which I apologise and hold my hands up. I got snubbed. I got skunked by this damn uh, time zone difference thing. That as of Sunday night, we're back on normal times, dude. But I missed your live, so I apologise profusely for that one, dude. It sucks, but you did do a pretty awesome thing in your live and uh, obviously it's out there on Instagram for anybody to go and check him out. Go and check him out on Instagram, uh, Corn Life Network. He put an awesome message out to the legendary Ben Gravy because if anybody here does know of Ben, they will know that he obviously went through some surgery in the last week. He's currently in Hawaii, so uh, aloha, dude. You know, come on, man. I hope you're rocking the Hawaiian shirt, dude. But he's... Uh, had an operation to repair a torn bicep. I don't know if that's the right terminology for it, but basically he decided to detach his bicep from his arm. Not a good look. And uh, I know that it super bummed him out. So Rick put out an awesome message on his live today just saying, dude, hope you get well soon. And uh, just embrace the fact of the amount of people's lives you've changed, the impact that you've had on people far and wide, and just, yeah, hang in there and uh, recovery, don't rush it. I know he's a soldier when it comes to recovery because it won't be the first. I hate to say it, probably won't be the last because this guy just never lets up. He's an absolute animal. And um, yeah, just be good to see you back to normal. However, Please do not worry as as much as we love you being the novelty surfer, the, the big wave surfer to some degree, dude. You've been thrashing some heavy ones recently. Um, we are in it because of you, my friend, and what you bring to the table. It is not about you uh, having to surf 100,000 hours a week. We just love you, dude, because you're a goddamn legend, full of positivity, full of stoke, and uh, you just hype us up and make us feel awesome in a kind of wonky world. So dude, just stay awesome. And as always, stay focused, stay positive. And uh, don't worry, man. I'm gonna do my very best in Grom style to even, uh, maybe even shout you out, Mr. Uh, ben of Gravies, and say, this one's for you, dude, as I probably wipe out and eat shit. But it'll be awesome. I hope it puts a smile on your face. So guys and girls, this week was a kind of a rough show I am on an early stop tomorrow. So we didn't have an official unofficial. I didn't have a shine of light. And yes, it's the third week, second week in a row where we haven't had an interview, but that will all be changing soon. There are gonna be a lot of things changing in the Friday Night Live show going in the next couple of weeks. There may be, and I will pre-warn you die-hard fans, there very well may be a small break in the spring but apart from that, 
We'll be here, we'll, as always, at 10.45. So don't worry, I'm not going anywhere. Don't tune out, don't switch off, don't go and watch other people's lives just yet. But I just want to pre-warn you, because I know if I was on the other side of this camera and I was hearing it, I'd be like, dude, dude, man, just break it to me gently, because I know that I need a long build-up if I was going to uh, be, uh, I don't know, without because there are some awesome people, and especially most of the people in these live chats right now, most of these individuals have some absolute fantastic channels. So hopefully, if you can still view the live comments, if you go down under this video or after the event, and you should be able to click on the comments, and you should be able to swipe left, and it should take you to the live feed of chat, and you should be able to see all of these individuals. And I do believe if you click on their icons, it will take you to their channels. So especially Cockney Buddha, Everyday Surfer, and the legendary Mr. Uh, Mr. Rick of the Corn Life Network. Go and check these individuals out because they all do very different stuff, but they're all awesome at what they do. And they definitely bring a level of entertainment and just genuine reality and realness to an otherwise quite mad platform, which is YouTube. So, as this is an anniversary, because I don't know if I mentioned it, I might have skipped it, but if you've stuck around this far, YouTube itself reminded me today that it is actually the anniversary of me starting this channel. So, it was quite a monumental shock. I don't count it by the day that I actually started the channel. I count it by the very first video that I put up, which I want to say is about August the 19th or something. It's silly like that. However, it's an anniversary, man. So it's a good Friday. It's the anniversary of the channel, which is the 30-year-old ROM, which will be changing in the coming months. So there's a lot of changes coming, but watch this space. How much better can it get? Apart from that, is obviously doing a vertical live from like a surf spot tomorrow. Let's go. Who's fired up? I know I am. Seriously, the nerves, the anxiety and everything else is kind of getting a little bit light. So I'm hyped. I'm fired up. Guys, girls, it's always a pleasure. I hope you enjoyed the show. It was a little bit short, but the Grom's got to get to bed. He's got an early start. So don't worry. Hang around. Who knows? Who knows what might happen on this channel in the weeks to come. But I will just say this. Stay focused, stay positive, stay awesome, and uh, stay out of trouble. But if you're going to do anything naughty, just don't get caught for it. Something like that. Until next week. Oh, look. The coast to come with it. Have a good one.